What is the best plumbers and plumbing contractors insurance in Westchester and Rockland counties? How do you get coverage on your plumbing business? And what does plumbing contractors insurance cost? In this video, I'm going to answer those questions and give you some advice on how to approach business insurance for plumbers and plumbing contractors in Westchester and Rockland counties. Coming right up. Hi, I'm Gordon Coyle, and thanks for clicking on my video. Do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button now so other plumbers and contractors like you can find this video on YouTube. Thanks. So you're probably thinking about your business insurance for your plumbing company and are curious about the costs or coverages or some other issue or common insurance problems and looking online for advice and guidance. I hope to cover some of those common issues we find with plumbing contractors insurance here but if there's a question you have that I didn't answer in this video, please contact me for a conversation. I promise, no hardcore selling or pushing you to quote the account. I just love solving problems for business owners, so I'd welcome your call or your email. What's the best plumbing contractor's insurance? In my opinion, the best insurance protection is one that is thoughtfully planned and carried out by an expert. That typically means working with an insurance broker that is experienced in business insurance and who works with contractors on a regular basis. I don't think that websites that promise to get you a quote in 10 minutes by answering a few questions makes a lot of sense. And here's why. Because, like it or not, business insurance is complex. And in that 10 minute process, who's the expert? Well, you are. You're being asked to be the insurance expert to understand your risks and the thousands of insurance coverages, forms, and options available in the marketplace. Look, I get it, convenience is great, but at what cost? Do you wanna potentially sacrifice the business you've built and worked so hard for to be lost in a lawsuit because you didn't know what excluding action over liability meant, or you didn't know why you needed an umbrella policy? The other point here is that just because an insurance website says that they are the cheapest for plumber's insurance and the most convenient doesn't necessarily make it true. What coverages should plumbers think about? For most plumbing contractors in Westchester and Rockland counties, a business owner's policy or a bot policy is going to give you the core property and liability coverages you're gonna need. Let's take a look at what's inside the BOP and what you're gonna need. Inside that BOP, you're going to look for the following things. The first is general liability. Most BOPs provide a million dollar limit of liability per occurrence and two million in the aggregate. If you're working with a broker to get a quote, I recommend asking them to quote an option of two million dollars per occurrence. I find that the price difference to double your protection here is pretty affordable and it makes sense. Next is property insurance. Here you're going to purchase protection for the tools, equipment, supplies, and other personal property stored in your office, shop, or home office. Tools and equipment stored in your trucks are commonly insured separately on an inland marine floater, which we'll cover in just a minute. A quick comment here. If you work out of your home, don't think that your business property is covered under your homeowner's policy. In fact, it's typically excluded, so you need to cover your business property on your business policy. Next up is Inland Marine. Sometimes this policy is called a tools floater or equipment policy. The word floater means that the property you're insuring, tools and equipment, is not fixed in any one place, but floats around and is mobile. Business Auto. This is typically a separate policy from your BOP and ensures your commercial vehicles leased, owned, or used in the business. Here, we sometimes see plumbing contractors register vans or pickup trucks in their personal name and insure them on their personal auto policy. This can be a problem as the name of your business is usually not a named insured on your personal auto policy. And in the event of a claim where your business is sued, you're not gonna have coverage. Now, some insurance agents will say, well, the business has hired a non-owned auto coverage, so it's not a problem. I don't agree. The intent of hired and non-owned auto is to provide the insured protection for temporary, short-term use of a vehicle that is rented, borrowed, or hired. The other problem that occurs in these situations relates to the um umbrella coverage, which I'm going to discuss next. The last issue with business auto is regarding limits of coverage. We recommend a million dollar auto liability limit protection, which is what most umbrella underwriters are going to require as underlying protection and when it comes to physical damage, consider using higher deductibles. When you assume more risk in the form of higher deductibles, the costs are gonna go down. Next, umbrella coverage. 
Umbrella or excess liability insurance provides an extra liability cover over and above your underlying general liability and auto liability policies if they're properly scheduled. Common umbrella coverage is purchased in million dollar increments. Do you need it? I think every plumbing contractor should strongly consider purchasing umbrella protection. If you're a small one person operation, your costs are gonna be minimal for that added protection, but it's really worth it. For larger firms that do commercial work, umbrellas are almost always required from your certificate holders. And lately we're seeing demands by customers that you carry $5 million to $10 million in limits. So yes, it is important. Next up, workers' compensation. If you have employees, you're required by law to have workers' comp. You can purchase workers' comp directly from the web or the state insurance fund, sometimes called the SIF. There are some safety groups in the state fund that provide some discounts, or you can package your workers' comp with the same insurer that covers your BOP and auto insurance. The advantage is convenience. One broker, one insurer to call for that certificate, one insurer that performs year-end audits, and one billing statement. Plumbers have a lot of options when it comes to workers' comp in New York. Again, it comes down to price and getting the coverage right. I have seen too many instances of plumbing contractors who purchased coverage directly online and had things fouled up due to miscommunications or lack of engagement by an expert. So you gotta be careful. Other options for plumbers to consider? Cyber insurance. If your business runs on data, meaning your billings, your appointments, your customer lists are stored on the computer or in the cloud, cyber insurance is a good idea to explore. The cost of coverage is cheap compared to the broad protection it provides and is critical in today's world of hackers and ransomware. Next, pollution insurance. Depending on the type of work you do, contractors' pollution remediation coverage may be worth reviewing and often is mandated by certain certificate holders in industrial settings. Next is bonding. While technically not a form of insurance, many plumbing contractors may need bid and performance bonds, which we can also assist you with. The big question, what does plumber's insurance cost? The big question on every contractor's mind. If you do some research online regarding costs, you may see things like basic standard custom cost charts that provide a monthly insurance cost for a plumbing contractor of like $89 a month. You may also see it online Insurance brokers providing median premiums for insurance, like the median premium for plumbers, is less than $125 a month. To me, these are unrealistic numbers that don't really indicate what you are going to pay for insurance. So how much does insurance cost for a plumbing contractor? The answer is going to be based on several factors, such as the type of plumbing you do. Is it primarily residential or commercial? Is it industrial process piping or sewer hookups? All of these different types of plumbing work are charged different rates for both general liability and workers' compensation. Geography. Typically, plumbers working predominantly in the five boroughs will pay more than a firm working in Westchester or Rockham counties. Next, the number of employees in payroll are the rating basis for general liability and workers' compensation. So the larger your payroll, the more premium you're gonna pay. The number of trucks you insure, the limits of coverage, and the deductibles you choose are also going to impact your premium. Your claims history. Plumbers with no claims will pay less than a similar plumbing company with several claims in the last five years. How do you save money on your plumbing insurance or find the cheapest plumbing insurance? That's a good question. In my mind, you need to do several things. The first, keep accurate records and make sure that your employees are characterized properly for payroll purposes. If you do several types of plumbing and contracting operations, be sure that each project and employee is characterized properly. Next, as I mentioned earlier, the better job you can do to have fewer claims or no claims, the better off you're gonna be price-wise. This means having a solid risk control and safety program. If you don't have one or don't know where to start with a safety plan, we can help you with a deep library of risk management resources. Related to risk control is the driver selection process and an ongoing monitoring process is also important to make sure that your drivers exhibit good driving characteristics both on and off the job. Lastly, speak to your broker about three months prior to your policy renewal dates and see what their opinion of the marketplace is. We don't recommend shopping your account out every year. In fact, that'll have negative consequences on your pricing over the long term but it does make sense to evaluate this every three years or so 
to be sure you're insured with the right insurance company. Here's the bottom line when it comes to insurance for plumbers. Now more than ever, you have a wide variety of choices when it comes to purchasing insurance. You can do it yourself online through a variety of websites, which I mentioned earlier, I just don't recommend. Or you can work with an expert firm who has the team to answer questions, issue certificates quickly, and give you advice when you need it. In most cases, that expert broker is not going to cost more than doing it yourself. So why add the hassle and burden of thinking through all those choices when you've got enough on your plate to deal with every day? If you choose to work with a broker like me, you're gonna wanna find someone who represents a wide variety of insurers who can offer you choice and have the resources, like I mentioned earlier, to provide advice on managing risk, safety, and compliance. By the way, we have all those things. Thanks for watching or reading this post. If you have any other questions, issues, or thoughts you'd like to talk to me about, please give me a call or drop me an email. My contact info is coming up, and in the description box below, there's a link to my calendar where you can book a call that's convenient for you. Thanks a lot.